when I started with him, the second week I was working there, I didn't have a desk. We didn't have room for desks. We had one desk, Dr. Dumont's desk, and that was it. But I had a workbench. He came to my office, to my bench one day, and said, Tom, would you take care of this matter for me and put some papers on my desk? Well, I said, I'll look them over and talk to you about it tomorrow. So I took it home. He had asked me to be technical expert on a patent litigation matter that came up. I said, Dr. Dumont, you are asking me to fight my own professor, Dr. Frederick Bedell, who is the owner of this patent, the developer of it, the bedell Reich Oscillograph patent. Incidentally, that patent was kind of interesting because it had two factors in its claims. One was synchronizing an electronic beam switch. If you put a little signal in with the signal you're looking at into the sweep, it'll lock it in and make it steady. Well, that synchronizing feature in that patent will have covered every television system in the world. The well, other feature was electronic switching. You put two signals at once and look at it and compare the input and the output. And wh well, what did uh, Dumont say when you pointed so, this? So, uh, when I told him I had to fight my professor, he said, well, we'll get somebody else to handle it over at the Darby and Darby Company. I said, no, hold off for a minute. So I called Dr. Bedell. I said, your patent is here and the General Radio Company in Cambridge, Massachusetts is suing Alan Dumont on it, and I've got to fight that. What do you think? He said, go ahead and fight it, Tom. He <laughs> says, um, if you win by proving the patent is invalid, you won't owe any royalties. If you are, if they are successful in sustaining the patent, he'll give you a beneficial low royalty rate for having established it so he can charge other people. That's the general radio company in, in Cambridge. So I said to Alan, I said, I'm going to go ahead and find out what's going on in this thing. I will do what you ask me, be the technical expert. So on that particular patent, I went down to the Library of Congress. I spent a month down in Washington, D.C. and searched through the literature at the Library of Congress and found two prior art references that made those patents invalid. 